a reminder, please turn off or silence your electronic devices. Thank you. Our meditation for today, Advent, a time of reflection and pondering the mysteries of, God, of our God. Being part of a family is a good thing. We come to know our parents, siblings, and relatives. Later on, we make friends, and when we travel, we discover the world and people who at times seem so foreign to us. Science extends our vision to our solar system, the Milky Way, then galaxies and the universe. How vast and beautiful, God made them all. Do you know that the earth fits into the sun about one million times, and our sun is not the largest thing up there? Whether it is a galaxy, a star, a continent, or our town, it was all made for us human beings, so that we can use it to sustain us and also to give glory to God. The first reflection in Advent should help us put things into perspective. Everything, absolutely everything, is a gift to us, and the greatest of all gifts is the Son of God, when he comes at Christmas. Thank you, Lord. In a moment of silence, let us place ourselves into the presence of God. Please rise.
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would render rend the heavens and come down, with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds, we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from old. Nor ear has ever heard, nor eye ever seen, any God but you, doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would, you might, would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful in your ways, Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves. And our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls himself your name, upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us. You have delivered us to our guilt. O Lord God, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of, of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth, rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall save you. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we shall call upon your name. The Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face. Be reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account. For the grace of God bestowed upon you in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift. As you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will come, he will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
luck. We made it this far, and hopefully we'll make it a little further. It is good, but we have to do something, as Christ says. Watch, be careful, watch. You have to know what's coming, at least you're wanting to know, and so you prepare for it. Prepare is a good thing. It's like uh, in the late 1800s, Sir Ernest Shackleton, he was an explorer for the British Crown, and three times he made the trip down into Antarctica, and so one of those trips, he had his crew embark, and they walked further in and to do some research and whatnot, and then they were, there was a, a problem, and they had to go back, but they couldn't because of the equipment and because of the men, somebody was, well, it was just a, a mess. Anyway, he said, took a couple of guys with us and said, I'll be back. I'm going to get the ship and we're going to get in here and we're going to get you out of here. So I took a few guys with them. Well, they didn't make it back to the ship. But as they started steering towards the place where the crew was, icebergs, left and right. You couldn't. You couldn't get to it. It's impossible. So what are you going to do in a frozen wasteland in a desert like that, cold outside, everything is white, and you have no one but God. So they all knelt down and prayed. And it said, like an invisible hand, the icebergs were moved apart. They moved in, loaded up the guys because they were ready. They left, and as soon as they left, the icebergs came back together again. It's just because they were ready, ready to go, and they went. Otherwise, it would have cost them their lives. That's what Christ tells us, be ready because you don't know. You have to find a way of getting alerted. We have to find a way of looking for something. Like Pittsburgh had the idea, you know? There was a town close by Pittsburgh itself, and it was a steel mill there. Every day you could hear boom, 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 steel mill. What else do you do? So people got used to it. They slept through it. It's no big deal. So one night there was a problem at the steel mill, and they had to shut down the mill. It was like 2 30 in the morning. Everybody woke up. No more noise. What's going on? We need time out like this. We need a time out to help us realize, what am I doing? What, what am I focusing on? We have got so much given to us. See, it's, it's like today's this new year, this new, new approach of the year. We start the first of Advent, and you, we start with the new of gospel, the gospel of Mark. This is the year B. Last year we had Matthew, this year is Mark. So we start, when you read a book, you open it up, the cover, the title, and then once upon a time, you start reading. But not with Mark, not with the liturgical year. It goes all the way to the back. And there he's telling them about the destruction of Jerusalem and whatnot. Be watchful, be alert. That's the beginning of the liturgical year. That's what we ought to do. Be watchful, be alert. And then we have to trust that God will take care of us. And we, we know it. But do we live it out? It is so hard for us sometimes in this world where everything is like focusing in the now and doing things and instead of letting go, just letting go. See, when you look around like we had in the uh, meditation at the beginning, God created the whole universe, everything there is. And just to put it in perspective, about a million Earths fit into the sun. Just how huge this is. Huge. There's sunspots on there, and they start coming back because we're coming out from the solar minimum, going to the solar maximum. So the sunspots are coming around again, and they're bigger. There's, they're so big. There's that 20, 30, 40 times the Earth. It's just sunspots where they fuse out this plasma, magma, and whatnot. So seeing all these things, what God has done for us, there's got to be a plan. It just doesn't happen by itself. So God has a plan for us. He created everything for us. He put people in it while they messed up, but he is still not giving up. So today we concentrate on the creation itself. Whatever we have around us is all given by God. And it's not just the magnificence of the universe, it's also the tiny, minute little things. And if you take now a microscope, they are so sophisticated, they can't go into so tiny, minute little things. They realize when you go down to the nitty gritty, it's nothing but holes in there. Holes. And holes are held together by something. But it is the grace of God that keeps things together. Even though it seems like a solid thing, like wood, steel, under the microscope, there are holes in them, big ones. So God is the creator and he holds all things together in himself. So if something goes wrong, we ought to, well, rely and go back to him and say, hey, God, you know, something 
something we need to get help. And God gives us signs all the time. We are just not able to see them. It's like back in the Revolutionary War. There's a term called the Hessians. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Hessians. In Germany, there's a section, and it's called Hesse. And there were a whole bunch of German soldiers. They were part of the crown soldiers. Actually, about uh, a fourth of them were all from Germany. And because most of them are from the Hesse area, they call them the Hessians. So they're fighting for the crown against the, uh, our, our, our guys here. And so they were in Trenton, New Jersey. And they settled down, a whole bunch of them, thousands of them, thousands. And so they were, well, George Washington didn't know what to do. He needed to do something, and so he had a plan. The plan was made known to a spy. He went to the Hessians in Trenton, New Jersey, wanted to see the commander-in-chief, and he wasn't allowed to it. So he wrote something on a piece of paper, gave it to the man, bring it to the man in charge, he will see me. Well, the man in charge was playing poker, and he was in a tent, and he was having a good old time with the whiskey and the bottle and the cards, and he put the note and put it in his pocket, pocket without looking at it. So he and it said, George Washington has crossed the Delaware. He's ready to attack us. It never came to the guy who, but well, he never read it. So in the morning now, there were shots fired. The head man was still playing cards, still drunk. And when shots were fired, because George Washington was taking over and took just about everybody captive. It's just one of those things. The message was there, it was just not read. So they come to Christ, Christ talks to us daily. He has a voice. He speaks to us in our voice of conscience. But we can't hear it if all this noise is going on out there. We have to find a time out for ourselves. Says Father Peter, time out, go and pray. So I come to a chapel here, spend an hour or so in here and start praying and meditating and doing things. And then I leave with the peace and I know everything will be okay. Because I know, I can't say how or why, but it is the certainty that things will work out just fine. And this is what God will teach us. He wants us to get ready for the coming. See, when Christ came, he came hidden first, and then he was persecuted and he was judged. The next time he comes, he will not come in silence, but in the magnificence of his being, who he is the Son of God. And he will be the judge of the people. So we are right in between. What we have now is we're going to be prepared for this coming, this second coming. For us, it can come any time. Heart attack, stroke, uh, accident, this and that, whatever it might be. We can't easily meet the Lord today. So the question is just, are you ready? Would you be able to meet him now when he comes? When you fall down and your life is demanded, comes before God, where would we be? Would we know would we be with God? Or is there any doubt? If there's any doubt, then we should make this amends. We should find a way of going to confession, preparing, so that every moment of our lives, we should be ready. We got our feelers out, we see things happening in the world, and then we take it to prayer, and then everything will turn out good, because Christ will be with us. If we are just here for a short time, knowing that this world and everything that is created is made for a purpose. He put us into it so that we might come to see the grandeur and splendor and the, the greatness of our Father and God. Actually, Father, today we have Father in uh, the first reading, Isaiah. There's only two times in the Old Testament where God is referred to as Father, and we had it today. It is, remember, remember Jesus says, how do you pray? Our Father. So he's referring back to Isaiah, because Isaiah was in the northern kingdom, and then the northern the Assyrians were swooping down, attacking them, taking them prisoner, taking them away from the from Israel. And this is where Isaiah is talking now. No, Lord, come down to us. Let the heavens open up. Come down to us, because you are our Father. And that He is. He is our Father. But so we have to behave as the children of God. And because we are the children of God, we have to be about the Father's business. 
It's not so much that we that we conquer the whole world. It is up to us to, well, pro propagate the kingdom of God. That's why he created all these things. So that everything will become and come under the dominion of God the Father. And it takes us to help ourselves, to get ourselves there, and then our family and friends and everyone whom we meet. It is a, it's quite a big undertaking, and we couldn't do it. But for this purpose, God has given us the grace. The grace starts with the desire to become more like God. Advent, time of preparation, a time to get to know our God again. Amen. Let us please stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and not made, not substantial with the Father, through many all things. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified in the conscious fire. He suffered the death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Praise and honor to you, Lord God, for being mindful of us on our journey to you. Church to teach all nations that Jesus Christ is the truth, the only way, and eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved country to be defended by our Blessed Mother, whose patroness she is, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that our good Lord will banish the evil forces that try to destroy the kingdom of God in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the faithful people of God to start living the gospel and stop killing the innocent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be granted the peace of God's kingdom, especially Mary Platt and Tom Lewitt, for all those whose names are written in the book of remembrance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now remember our own needs in silence. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we so look forward to the coming of your Son. Grant us all we need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
friends, we make gather from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For he assumed that his first coming in lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. And when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as with an entry of claim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Apostles and all the saints, 
Saint Joseph, with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, free at last from the moon of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let's pray. May these mysteries of the Lord in which we have participated profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven, and fast to what endures, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Let's pray for God's blessings. Respond with Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son, and yearn for His coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with His blessing. <coughs> As you run the race of this present life, may He make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now in devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when He comes again in majesty. Amen. And bless you, mighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, come upon and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, the Defense of God, be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God give you the kingdom of the prey, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who rob out of the world, seeking the world of the souls. Amen. 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 success for your prayer for St. Joseph. Prayer for us. Amen. Holy angels and saints. Prayer for us. Assistance remain always with us. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. A couple of announcements. We have angel trees on their both entrances. Our children would like uh, uh, to receive some gifts, so if you could help, that would be wonderful. Also, there's a layette in this section up here uh, for mothers who need some help with babies, some baby things, if you could, please. Also, it was reported that a couple of uh, people who sent emails to the got a scam. What it is, they send an email or text message to you saying that I'm in trouble and I need some help. If you can give us some, some uh, gift card or something to help me out of it, pickle, basically. That's a scam. Don't anybody send any money to anybody just asking for money. If you do, check back with the person who sent it, because what they do is they have my email address and change one letter in it. And so if you look at it fleetingly, you wouldn't notice it. But if you look closely, you find there's a scam. So people are not always that good. So be alert. <coughs> also, uh, the Mass is ended now here. Uh, if you'd like to stay, we continue with our exorcism prayers for our country, that things will turn out for the better. And also we have some bulletins for children and also some gifts for children. Name the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Most gracious Virgin Mary, who was thou across the head of the serpent, protect us from the vengeance of the evil one. We offer up prayers, supplications, sufferings, and good works to thee, so that thou may purify them, sanctify them, and present them to thy Son as a perfect offering. May this offering be given so that the demons that influence or seek to influence the members of the Auxilium Christian Orum do not know the source of their expulsion and blindness. Blind them so that they know not our good works. Blind them so that they know not on whom to take vengeance. Blind them so that they may receive the just sentence for the works. Cover us with the precious blood of thy Son, so that we may enjoy the protection which flows from his passion and death. We ask this to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, we are the angel, the we are protection
hear us, God the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Son of Christ, only begotten Son of the Eternal Father. Save us. Blood of Christ, incarnate Word of God. Save us. Blood of Christ of the New and Eternal Testament. Save us. Blood of Christ falling upon the earth in the agony. Save us. Blood of Christ shed profusely in the scourging. Save us. Blood of Christ flowing forth in a crowning with thorns. Save us. Blood of Christ poured out on the cross. Save us. Blood of Christ, Christ of our salvation. Save us. Blood of Christ without which there is no forgiveness. Save us. Blood of Christ, Eucharistic drink and refreshment of souls. Save us. Blood of Christ, stream of mercy. Save us. Blood of Christ, victor over demons. Save us. Blood of Christ, courage of martyrs. Save us. Blood of Christ, strength of confessors. Save us. Blood of Christ, bringing forth virgins. Save us. Blood of Christ, help of those in peril. Save us. Blood of Christ, relief of the burdened. Save us. Blood of Christ, solace in sorrow. Save us. Blood of Christ, hope of the penitent. Save us. Blood of Christ, consolation of the dying. Save us. Blood of Christ, peace and tenderness of hearts. Save us. Blood of Christ, pledge of eternal life. Save us. Blood of Christ, freeing souls from purgatory. Save us. Blood of Christ, most worthy of all glory and honor. Save us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously bear us, Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Thou hast redeemed us with the blood of the Lord. And made us the kingdom of our God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who hast appointed an only begotten Son to be the Redeemer of the world, and hast been pleased to be reconciled unto us by his blood, for in us we beseech thee, so to venerate with solemn worship the price of our salvation, that the power thereof may here on earth keep us from all things hurtful, and the fruit of the same may gladden us forever hereafter in heaven, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we call upon thy holy name and humbly beseech thy clemency, that through the intercession of the ever immaculate Virgin, our Mother Mary, and the glorious Archangel St. Michael, Thou wast vouchsafed to help us against Satan and all the other inkling spirits that are prowling about the world to the peril, the great peril of the human race and the loss of souls. Amen. August, Queen of the Heavens, heavenly sovereign of the angels, thou from the beginning hast received from God the power and permission to rush to have Satan. We humbly beseech thee, ascend thou, O Lady of so that I will never